I always say, you know, let the cares of the day just melt away for this next little bit of time. And it'll go by so quickly, I promise you. Just tune out the world. You know, tell your children if they are little to go somewhere and just have a seat, let them be occupied because you do not want to miss being fed. We're feeding tonight. We are going to ingest a word that many of you may need just to get through the rest of the week. So don't deprive yourself of this time. Don't be distracted. Whenever you are in a position to receive from the word and from the Holy Spirit, the enemy will crank things up and try to distract you. So don't fall for it. Give your mind and your inner ears and be open to what the word is going to impart to us tonight. Amen. So right where you are, bow your heads and let me just pray and cover this meeting tonight. I'm so excited to share this word this evening. Father God, I thank you for the honor and the privilege to come together as part of your body as we are unified in seeking diligently, seeking you through your word. We acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And Father God, as your children, I am asking you tonight to open up the inner ear, the inner hearing of every man and woman that is on this line tonight. Let them receive your word with joy and gladness and let it take deep root in their hearts, Father God, that they can use it so that they can walk in victory and in all the fruits of the spirit that our Lord and Savior died for us to possess. And it is in Jesus' mighty name, the only name that has authority in heaven, in the earth, and under the earth, that we all say amen, and it is so. Amen, and amen, and amen. My kids, they always say, Mom, please don't pray too long. We're hungry. And we're ready to eat and things like that. But I love, love, love to uh, pray and usher in the presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, the word tells us that where one or more of God's children are gathered together, he will be in the midst. And the he that he's talking about is the Holy Spirit. And we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit a little bit tonight in God's word. Because I want you to know how important it is that you recognize, that you acknowledge that God is amongst us. He is in the earth realm. As long as there is one child of God who has been reborn of the spirit, who has received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit is present. And he's our helper, he's our comforter, he's our teacher. He receives instructions for you directly from Jesus Christ. So it's important. I know some of us might have been raised in um, church settings where the Holy Spirit was made to be something scary. You know, people fall out. They get the foaming at the mouth. We've seen these sorts of things. I know I have in my journey um, as a believer. But I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is gentle. The Holy Spirit is not uh, about confusion. The Holy Spirit is not scary. The Holy Spirit is necessary for you to walk in the fullness of what Jesus Christ came down here and sacrificed himself for. It's part of your inheritance. It contributes, he contributes to your power and your authority. You know, we won't go there tonight, but on the day of Pentecost, which many of you may have heard about, when the disciples were gathered in the upper room after Jesus Christ had been crucified and after he had been resurrected and showed himself to those that he wanted to show himself to, not everybody got to see the resurrected Savior. He revealed himself to certain ones, but he told them even before he was crucified that he would not leave 
them helpless that he had to go. At the time, the disciples really didn't understand everything that Jesus was trying to tell them as he was preparing them for his fulfillment of his purpose, which was to be the immaculate sacrifice for all of us. So the Holy Spirit was necessary before the first disciples were able to go out into the land and perform the miracles and signs and wonders that Jesus Christ had told them that they would be able to do. It is the Holy Spirit that empowers us to do things. I cannot get revelation from this word. I cannot sit before you week after week without the presence of the Holy Spirit we all receive this when we become born again. It's just that some of us do not acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is real. Some of us may, like I said, well, you may have been traumatized in your spiritual journey because some folks erroneously, even in the church, have just made a spectacle of the Holy Spirit instead of teaching and revealing his true purpose. He is the spirit of truth. He gives us wisdom. He gives us discernment. He gives us instructions and he gives us power. He is the reason why you can have fire in your belly for the things of God. So if you want to be baptized, in the Holy Spirit. How many of you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Put in the chat if you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some of you may have already received this baptism. It displays itself by you being able to speak in other tongues, your heavenly language. It is a way that the enemy is confused because when you pray and you're able to pray in your heavenly language, the enemy cannot decipher what you are saying because it is coming from the spirit. It's coming from a place that is shut off to him. And it's a way of speaking directly to God when you don't have words to speak. You know, sometimes we pray these repetitive prayers and most of the time we're asking God for something. But when you have a relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ, you tend to want to spend time with him. You wanna hear from God. You want God to speak to you not so much you always asking him for something. And that's what the gift of speaking in other tongues will allow you to do. It just opens up another dimension of your relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ. And it's your right as a born again believer to walk in that. So don't let anyone make you feel that this is something weird. This is something that only the pastor can do. This is something, you know, um, off the wall or hokey. No, we're going to find out that it is really something we all must be walking in if we want to have the fullness of what God has for us. Excuse me one second. <clears throat> For some reason, my voice, my throat just got really dry. I'm telling you, we got something good tonight. And the enemy will not take my voice this evening because you need to hear. Thank you so much, baby. You need to hear what the Holy Spirit has revealed to me in this word. Mm. Listen to me very closely. <clears throat> This right here, and I've mentioned this before, and Tori, please put this in the chat. This is called the voice of the martyrs. Before I get into this word, I want you to know something. As you all have been taking your pulse for the past month, as we've been talking about identity in Christ, 
We've been talking about the mechanism by which the enemy will use to keep you from walking in the fullness of what Christ died to give you. I tell you things that we have brothers and sisters all over the world worshiping in secret, worshiping in hiding. The voice of the martyrs is a free pamphlet. You see how thin this is? It's very thin. You can get it for free. You can go online, the vo voice of the martyrs lets us know what is happening to our fellow brothers and sisters all over this world as they are preaching, teaching the word of God. Some of them are not preachers. They're passing out Bibles. And as a result, they're being put in prison. They're losing their homes. This one just came to me this week and I read them. You know why? Because it makes me so grateful for the privilege and the honor of being in a country where right now I can openly talk about Jesus. I can openly carry my Bible. I can openly get on this internet and any other medium and talk about the goodness of Jesus Christ. All of our brothers and sisters do not have this privilege. I was reading in here about individuals in Asia, in Vietnam, in places in Africa, who literally, there is a village where they still worship animals. They see animals as gods. And there are believers in this village in Vietnam who are teaching and talking about Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to imagine this is happening right now. Imagine that you stood and spoke to your neighbors about Jesus. You got bold. You asked your neighbors, are you saved? You confessed and witnessed about Jesus Christ and your entire community converges on you and your family, trashes your home, tears up all of your possessions, invades your home, the whole community, throw all your things on the street and run you out of your community. Can you imagine that? This is what believers are dealing with today. Or better yet, the government finds out that you are passing out Bibles and talking about the goodness of Jesus Christ and what he did and being reborn of the spirit. And not only do they imprison you, but they bulldoze your house, level it to the ground. And then they bulldoze your church. They level it to the ground. And you, your wife, your children have nothing. I need you all to understand that we are living in a time where the enemy is ratcheting up his attack on God's people. And when you get this word tonight, you'll understand why I'm speaking to you this way right now, because some of you have really not received just how crucial it is, how wonderful it is, how magnificent it is to serve God, to serve him by getting to know him and receiving grace and mercy and the magnificent love that he's shown toward you when he gave us a way to avoid hell. There are preachers right in the United States of America that are preaching that hell doesn't exist. There are people believing this lie 
If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, a true disciple of Jesus Christ, if you are striving to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, then you know that his Bible, his word, the revelation breathed into mighty men and women of God. That's what we stand on. And the Bible clearly tells us that there will be a place called hell. And not only will the devil occupy it for all eternity, the false prophet and the dragon or the beast, but also every man, every woman, everyone who rejected Jesus Christ is in jeopardy of being placed there too for all eternity. This is what we believe. Because everything that Jesus Christ spoke out of his mouth and everything that was left on record by those who spoke directly with God, those who walked with Christ, from Genesis to Revelation, we stand on that word. Now you have to make a choice that the word of God is going to be truth for you. And we believe, we believe these things by faith. So when I hear about brothers and sisters, use this picture right here. These are men of God who have gone into the brothels. And for those of you who don't know what a brothel is, it's a whorehouse. And they are baptizing women who have been subjugated and forced, many of them, into selling and prostituting their bodies. And they're preaching the word. And they're taking a risk. They could be killed for doing this. When you get the voice of the martyr, I promise you, it's a cure for any of you who spend too much time complaining or spend too much time looking at your circumstances. There is not one person on this line tonight who has shed blood for Christ, who has literally lost freedom or who have had their life in peril for speaking the name of Jesus. It's a blessing, my brothers and sisters, to be born in this country where we can say openly and with pride that we are disciples of Jesus Christ. But I want you to take it a little further. I want you to truly make the choice to have a relationship with your savior. We've been talking a lot about submission, yielding, recognizing that we do not belong to ourselves. There are two lies that we tend to believe in. These lies have been bred by the enemy. One is that we're islands unto ourselves. Some of us, after we come to Christ, think we can just blend into the woodwork. We can just be anonymous, that there's nothing more for us to do. That's a lie straight from the pit of hell. You were saved so that you could go out into all the nations and spread the good news. That's really a career objective and should be of every believer. The second lie is the lie that you don't need anyone, that you are self-sufficient, that everything you have and everything you've accomplished is because you're so great. And we fall into that. It is a fleshly thing that happens. I'm a business owner. I work hard. But I am not the author and finisher of my faith. I am not the owner of me. My business 
is blossoming and growing, not because I'm so great, but because my father by Christ Jesus is so great. I give everything to him. It's to his glory because I'm a child in his presence. I'm totally dependent on Jesus Christ totally dependent. For those of you who are in college or have career aspirations or have a desire to grow in your business, until you give everything to Jesus Christ, you'll get a little something, something, and you're going to work very hard for it. But when you submit that thing, whatever it is, completely and totally to Jesus as his child, as the one that understands that we don't belong to ourselves, he'll grow it. He'll send you the right people. He'll make sure you have resources. People will begin to give into your bosom. That's called favor. But again, you have to be willing to submit all to your savior. He has to become Lord of your life. It's always going back to the lordship issue. And whether we want to admit it or not, we have problems with giving up control. I know I did. So I'm just going to speak for myself. You know, in the world, I wanted to control my destiny. I wanted to know from A to Z what would happen if I did this or that. I had to know, dot the I's and cross the T's. If you came to me with something, I have to know everything. But as we walk in this journey of life as believers, as those that are diligently seeking a relationship with our Savior and our Lord Jesus, you have to submit and yield all to Christ. If you all are following what I'm saying tonight, if you're getting the nugget that I'm trying to give you, would you please put in the chat, amen? Because I'm telling you, from your career to your business, to your relationships, to raising your children, to being a good neighbor, to being anything you aspire to be in this world, in this natural life that you have, you as a believer, if you've been reborn of the spirit, if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior, you're going to have to submit and yield all to him. And then you're going to have to acknowledge the Holy Spirit so you can hear instructions for your life. Many of you, as I said earlier, have not received truly the Holy Spirit. Once you've been filled with his presence, you'll never forget it. It is the evidence that most of us are seeking that God is real. After tonight, after you get this word of scripture, I want you in your private time, get somewhere quiet and private and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with his presence. Request of him, because that's all you have to do. That you want to feel his presence. He's already around us. He's already here, but he will fill you. He will touch you if you ask. It's really that simple. Don't you ever let anyone again make you feel that you have to carry for the spirit or that you have to go through 10,001 changes. If you've been born again, you have to ask. A 10-year-old who has received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior can be filled 
with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Why am I talking about this this evening? Because as I have been studying and as the Father has revealed to me all of the suffering that individuals go through around this world for his name's sake, it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to stand. You know, many of those examples that I gave you, all they had to do was recant, reject, denounce Jesus, and they would get their freedom. They would get their possessions back. But these ordinary men and women said no. Even though you persecute us, even though I've lost everything in this material world that I've had, I can never renounce Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. How many of you on the line tonight, if you are faced with utter devastation, your home being bulldozed, your community turning against you, for the name of Jesus, how many of you would be able to stand? Do you have that type of faith? Do you have that relationship with your Lord and Savior where you would feel empowered even in the face of losing your natural life that you would stand. See, we're not coming together on Wednesday nights and Sundays just because we don't have anything better to do. There's a mandate on your life. As we are going into 2021, things are going to start to heat up. Don't think if you get past COVID that you're in the clear. Brothers and sisters, the only clear is when Jesus comes again. Until then, you are to be diligent in your seeking of a relationship with him. Sometimes, like our precious bishop, you have to just take a break. Some of you have never fasted. You've never pushed away from the table and said, you know what? For the next two weeks, I'm not going to eat until the sun sets. You know, some of you have never sacrificed. I'm just going to shut down the TV. Or after a certain time, I'm not going to be on my phone. Some of you need to detox from social media. Some of you need to detox from being on the phone, gossiping with your friends. Some of you have boyfriends and girlfriends that you're doing things with that are not of God that you need to push away from and say, you know what? I want to change in my life. I know that some of you are going through things because I receive the request for prayer. It's time. It's time for the true worshipers and seekers of Jesus Christ to start growing and maturing. It's time to begin that process. If you have been too saturated, too preoccupied with the things of this world, so much so that you don't open your Bible until it's time for Bible study, or you don't open your Bible except for on Sunday, you're cheating yourself of what God has for you. And brothers and sisters, I do not, I do not want you to continue to live that way. The Father has great and mighty plans for your life. So turn with me tonight. Two things, you are not an island unto yourself and you are not self-sufficient. You were created to be dependent and you were created to have relationships interdependent. That's why God gives us these things, mother and children, 
husband and wife, friends, so that we can learn how to depend on one another. I was raised by parents who felt that being independent was the alpha and the omega. That may be true in the world, but it's not true in the kingdom. We are to be dependent on our Lord and Savior, and we we are to be a unified body of Christ. If my brother or sister are suffering in Asia, then I should feel that in my heart. I should be praying for them. If I have brothers and sisters, and we do in Iran, who have to worship in secret, we have brothers and sisters who have to smuggle in Bibles in China. We have brothers and sisters in Africa, in those Muslim parts of the world where they don't just say, hey, you're going to be Muslim, but they go through and destroy, murder, and hack people to death who do not choose to worship in Islam as opposed to worshiping Jesus. These things are happening even as these words are coming out of my mouth. And we should be praying for our brothers and sisters who are shedding blood and losing real things for his name's sake, for the name of Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, Yeshua, Emmanuel, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. That's how serious it is. And I asked myself, I said, Father, why is it so difficult for your children in the United States of America to grasp the magnificence of you? You should stop and think, why are Christians being persecuted? If there's nothing to this Jesus Christ, why is he such a threat? See, we're bombarded here with foolishness, commercials, consumerism, spending, acquiring, distractions, so that we won't dive deep into this word and get the truth. Not in a way that makes us anxious, but in a way that sets us free and allows you to know the great love that the Father, the Creator, has for His creation, which is us. Amen? You need to know who you are to God. And you know this and you discover this when you discover who Jesus Christ truly is. It's simple, brothers and sisters, but you've got to choose to get on this path. I hope you'll join me. This is a lifelong pursuit, and I'm having the time of my life. And all the cares of this world cannot replace the joy of knowing that God did everything that he did through Jesus Christ because he loves me. Amen. Follow me now to John 14 in the New Testament. I want to share with you what Jesus shared with his disciples about the Holy Spirit. And we're going to start at verse 15. I need for you to really listen up. He was preparing them for what he needed to do. But at the same time, he was assuring them of something that was coming that would help them because Jesus knew that his disciples and those who had chosen to believe in him would suffer hardships, tribulations, and persecutions. He knew this 
So he was constantly preparing them, but assuring them at the same time. It's almost like what I do with my teenage children as they are getting older. I'm constantly talking to them about adulthood and the responsibilities that are associated with being an adult. But at the same time, I'm assuring them that they can do it that they'll learn the things that they need to learn and that they will grow and become adults. It's a little scary for them thinking that at some point in time, they have to break the umbilical cord truly for mom, but they can do it. So Jesus is doing the same thing in this word of scripture with his disciples. Starting with verse 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commands and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth, verse 17. The world cannot accept him. And I'm reading from the New International Version because it neither sees him nor knows him. So in other words, unless you believe and have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit is nothing to you. You cannot receive him. You cannot know him. He is not for you. So that's another special thing that differentiates us from the unbelievers or those who have been captivated by this world. Jesus goes on to say, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. Woo! Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans. Always a picture of provision, of protection, of love. He says, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. He's giving them the warning of what he has to do, but you will see me. In other words, he's talking about the resurrection. See, he hasn't been crucified yet. So he's letting his disciples know, he's giving them a hint of what's to come. And when he was resurrected, he only showed himself to certain ones. He says, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. And then he goes on to say, on that day, you will realize that I am in my father and you are in me and I am in you. Let's just let that sink in. Jesus Christ is telling them that when they see the things that he's been teaching and performing and telling and foretelling them, when they see it come to pass, he says, I will live and you also. Verse 21, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. Brothers and sisters, he only gave us two commands. He said, love your neighbor or your brother as you love yourself and love the Lord thy God with everything you have. He gave us two because he fulfilled the rest of those commands at the cross. That's why through Jesus, we are made righteous and can enter into the holy presence of Almighty God. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father. 
and I too will love them and show myself to them. All of this acceptance, all of this access, all of this privilege, you are VIP with the God that created everything, the heavens and the earth. When you receive Jesus Christ, you get all access to Father God. Now at this point, Judas, and those of you who don't know, there were two Judases as disciples. So the Bible makes clear that this Judas who asked the question was not the Judas that, be that betrayed Jesus. Verse 22, then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, but Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Verse 23, Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. There's that word submission, obedience. If you submit and yield to Christ as Lord, then you will have no problem obeying his word. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Some of you are suffering. Some of you think you've been abandoned. Some of you are worried how you're gonna make it from one day to the next. As a child of the most high God, you need to stop your worrying and start standing on the truth of this word. Jesus said that if you will obey me, Obey me. Keep my commands. We will come and make our home with you. Anyone, verse 24, who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own, they belong to the Father who sent me. Jesus is making it clear, I am speaking under the authority of the one who sent me. Obedience is not a bad, ugly thing. It comes with privileges. Submission is not an ugly thing. Being dependent on Jesus is the ultimate way for a believer, a disciple, a Christian to live. Verse 25, all this I have spoken while still with you. See, he hadn't gone to the cross yet, but he's preparing his disciples. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. See how important the Holy Spirit is? You see why we cannot relegate him to something spooky, something hokey, something that people perform and make all these crazy gestures about? He's important to you. He will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that Jesus Christ has said. Verse 27, and we're almost done. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My, pe my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Again, Jesus is constantly making the uh, line of differentiation between what he gives to his children and what the world gives. It's higher, it's better, it's more. Don't settle for being a lukewarm 
some tiny believer. This should make you hallelujah happy because some of you are not operating in peace. Some of you are anxious even now. How am I gonna pay my bills? I wonder if I'll have a job. How am I going to grow my business? How am I going to bring a wayward child, a wayward teenager back into the family? How am I going to help my spouse? How am I going to live? You see, Jesus said, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Then he goes on to say, and this is a message that some of you need to hear over and over and over again. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. What he spoke to those followers, to those disciples, back then he is speaking to us now. Those brothers and sisters in those areas of the world, they received this by faith. Who wouldn't be afraid? My Lord, if you are faced with losing everything that you have, your life is on the line if you do not renounce if you do not walk away from Jesus Christ, none of you have been in that position. And the only way that you will be able to stand when that day comes, and brothers and sisters, that day will come. The Bible tells us that there will come a time when even the people of God will suffer for his name's sake. Will you stand? Will you be able to stand? You see, do you know enough about your Lord and Savior? Is one day a week good enough for you? All hell may be breaking loose in some of your lives right now. Or you may have members in your family where all hell is breaking loose. Do you have enough in your belly, in your spirit, that you can go to them and look them in the eye and say, Jesus Christ lives and he died just for you. You don't have to live like this anymore. You don't have to be anxious and afraid. You don't have to worry. Your circumstances are not bigger than Jesus Christ or our Father. How many of you can be bold enough to share that with someone that is hurting, that is going through? How many of you would give all that you possess for the name of Jesus? Are you so attached to the things of this world or have you tricked yourself into believing that there is no hell like some believers have? Some believers say, well, hell is already here. It's hell on earth. No, honey, hell is a lake of fire that never goes out. And right now it's empty because the day of judgment has not come. So no, we are not in hell we have an opportunity to shed light in the dark places. As I was reading about my brothers and sisters, they are sending Bibles, the voice of the martyrs, they send Bibles in large print because you've got generations of young people being raised by their grandparents. This is especially true in China. Because in China, parents often have to leave their children and go away and work just to support their education. So as the Christians are secretly spreading the gospel of Jesus, 
Bibles are being smuggled in to this older generation that is watching the children in large print so that they can read to the children. You know, if you would take your thoughts off of your circumstances, which really are small in comparison to what some are suffering for the name of Christ, you will find that the Father will speak to you about what he would like for you to do with the life that he's blessed you to possess. Some of you are so preoccupied with your own problems that you've convinced yourself with the help of the enemy that they are so huge that even God can't fix them. That's a lie straight from the pit of hell. You are limited. The Father through Christ Jesus is limitless. I need for you all to receive this word with joy. Receive it with the seriousness that it was given to me. You're walking around with only a small portion of what Christ died to give you. You have the same power and authority as those disciples were given. That's amazing. That is something that you need to explore. And how do you do it? By spending time with your Savior. Tell him, tell him tonight that he is Lord of your life. Tell him tonight that you will yield and submit to him, that you love him and will keep his commands. Tell the Holy Spirit, I want you to invade me, to fill me with your presence. I want fire in my belly. I no longer want to be a lukewarm Christian. I want to be a true disciple and follower. You will never be fulfilled in another person. There's only one that can fulfill you. There's only one that can take away all of your anxiety. They can restore everything that the enemy has stolen and it's contained in the name of Jesus. Oh, you can run from here to there, from this one to that one, but nothing will satisfy the way Jesus satisfies. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you with a love that some of you will never comprehend fully. And he wants what's best and what's good for you. He doesn't want you to suffer. He even said in his word, don't be afraid. He said, I'll give you my peace. <laughs> it's amazing what we have access to if we will only choose to tap into it. I pray that this word tonight, explore this for yourself. Read it. All of this he said to the disciples before going into chapter 15 and telling them that apart from him, we can do nothing. And he constantly reminds us that when we are in him, we can ask the Father anything and he'll do it. And you'll ask things that are in God's will. Why? Because you know Christ. Oh, this book, this book is life. It's life. It's your compass. It gives you direction. And the Holy Spirit teaches us wisdom, discernment. Discernment, if you have discernment in your life, you will see when things are coming that are not of God. 
Some of you get kicked around and you get uh, tossed to and fro because you lack discernment. You think everything that looks good is good for you. You think everything that sounds good is good for you. But when you have the Holy Spirit operating at maximum capacity in your life, you will receive wisdom straight from the throne room of God. And you'll be able to see things from afar off before they come in and destroy you. Some of you have been wallowing in the mud far longer than you needed to. Embrace your Savior as Lord tonight. How many of you are willing to make that choice? How many of you are willing to yield and submit to Jesus Christ fully? How many of you are willing to commit to studying him and being diligent in your word, pushing away from the distractions, giving yourself a time where it's just you and Jesus Christ. Some of you may need to get up earlier in the morning so you can have your time. Some of you need to begin to embrace the fact that you belong to Jesus. It's not just words, it's a fact. You are not an island unto yourself. You were created to be dependent on your Father God. Stop being afraid to relinquish your control. It hasn't been working. If you're honest with yourself, if you've been taking your pulse, you know that there's something more. All you have to do is choose. And the Holy Spirit, if you ask, will touch you in a way that you will never forget it. Every word spoken by Jesus Christ Every word left on record for us, we receive it as truth by faith. Amen. Well, I tell you what, that is my time. I want you all, go get the voice of the martyr. Get something so that you can see how real it is to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Take this word, ingest it, chew on it, get it inside of you, read it over and over. Ask the Holy Spirit to touch you, to fill you with his presence. Stop playing spiritual games. Don't be religious. Have a relationship. And see how quickly the Father responds to your obedience and to your submission. A more excellent way, we are movement, brothers and sisters. We're not just a cookie cutter ministry. We have been appointed by God to tell you the truth, to share this good news that you are so much more than what this world is telling you, you are. Will you embrace it? Will you walk in it with me? Will you experience Jesus's peace? He left it for them, so he left it for you. It's a thrilling way to live. And I don't care where you are and what you are doing when you are full of this word. It will spill out of you. You'll find that you can't stop talking about the goodness of Jesus. Grace is receiving what you have not earned. Unearned favor. 
And that's what we have. Amen. Whom the son has set free is free indeed. I want every last one of you to blossom and to become all that Jesus Christ died for you to become. As you've received this word, I'm gonna ask like I always do on Wednesdays, is there anyone that wishes to pray us out as we conclude our evening? And I hope to see you all again on Sunday at 12 p.m. Is there anyone who will be bold enough to cover us in prayer as we go into the rest of our evening? Well, I'll tell you what, the more you get this word inside of you, the more you receive Jesus Christ, the bolder you'll be. You'll not be afraid to pray. You'll not be afraid to speak his name. So right where you are, I want you all to bow your heads and let me cover you tonight in prayer as you complete your evening. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity for the privilege and the honor to represent you. Father, we know apart from Jesus, we are nothing, we can do nothing, and we cannot come boldly into your presence. Lord, receive us just as we are. Father God, help us by the power of the Holy Spirit to rightly discern your word and to receive revelation of it. Now, as each of my brothers and sisters go into the rest of their evening, Father, let your peace that surpasses all understanding rest upon their homes, upon their persons, in their minds, Father God and give them, Father, all that they have need of, your supernatural provision, Father. Let them see your mighty hand move in their lives. Lord, you know their needs. You know every hair that is in their heads, Father God. Show them who you are, Father. Stir up the gifts within them and help them to boldly yield and submit and be obedient to the call that is upon their lives. Father, we are your unified body and we do what we do with joy and gratitude. And it is in the name of Jesus Christ, the name above every name, the only name by which any one of us can be saved and come boldly into your presence, that we ask that you receive this prayer tonight. Amen and amen and amen. Well, God bless you all. I thank you so much for your faithfulness in joining and tuning in. The more that you get of Jesus, the more of him you will desire. That's a promise. Ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill you tonight. Don't be afraid. Be excited. Doors are going to begin to open in your life. Remember, Jesus Christ is a more excellent way. I'll see you Sunday, and I love you all. Good night.